Now, we talked about web services, and basically these are modules that are assembled into services. The example that I used before of the weather for, uh, let's say, Hems uh, Hofstra University for the Hempstead zip code, that might be a web service for the weather. Um, basically what it does is it wraps an XML wrapper, and, and for those of you who are not familiar, XML is just a way to format uh, data or format uh, a request in this case. And it's a file. You can look up on Google a sample XML. And what we do is we, we wrap around it like a request, like a piece of uh, code, which would say, hey, I want to know the weather in zip code and the parameter is zip code 11549. What it does is it basically on the, on the receiving end, that service is exposed so I can call it. When I make that call using a web, re web request or a WSDL request, it hits that server. The server recognizes it, unwraps the XML, takes the pieces that it needs, create, runs the code to find the weather, then it basically takes the result, wraps it again in an XML, and sends it back to my application, which unwraps it and basically displays the data. But it allows for a common format between systems. If we are all talking the same language, and we all say that this is using a standard WSDL or Web Services definition language, WSDL, makes it easier to integrate systems, makes it easier to create these uh, random services that do various things and then pull together and pull everything together in another application, which is called a mashup. Um, providing services ensure a common way to speak among systems. I can get clear and concise results. They're very, very predictable, so long as the documentation is predictable and the application runs the way it's supposed to. Um, and it also, using XML allows for backward, uh, uh, backward compatibility. The reason for that is because with XML, if I have, uh, if I have a certain format for the way it is, uh, let's say field 1, field 2, field 3, I can order them in any way, or I can add a field 4, and if my older system had no idea of field 4, no big deal, because XML is a type of object construct that allows me to only pull the pieces that I need based on the name, no matter where it is within that XML document, so long as it's encapsulated properly. So in conclusion, uh, we've got the traditional approach from the 1960s to give more discipline and control. In the 70s and 80s, we have data-driven development, stressing uh, improving the early phases of development. Requirements were a very, very key thing. In the 90s, we start talking about integrating uh, uh, integration systems. We start talking about client servers, and then we have the internet-based systems and web-centric systems. Um, this whole need for integrated enterprise systems uh, takes off a little bit more, and so what we find is that more of these ERP systems and, and CRM systems that get bigger and bigger monoliths says we can do all of these items that you need to do for a various number of departments, and we're web-based. They may, again, not be best of breed in the individual areas, but they may be best of breadth, which is we handle more of the functions than our competitors. Nowadays, development on the Internet, uh, it's all about inter-organizational development. How do I uh, manage my development but work with other companies and their development and just use the pieces that I need to create these concepts of mashups? It's extremely important because as we get into mobile technologies, the concept is, is that I can basically do the same thing that I'm doing on a mobile device that I'm doing on my PC, and ultimately I could extend that to a television or any other device that I want. Because it's web services or services based, the presentation layers on each of those devices can make service calls to the appropriate servers and then get responses and then display them however they want. So that's where the benefit lies.